Hey everybody, Prospector Jess here. I'm going to bring you a new topic tonight. Uh, this is about where is gold in Idaho. So what we're looking at right now is the gold locations in Idaho as seen by the USGS MRDS. Talk about that in the government gold maps or GGM product. Uh, I also talk about it a bit in a bit more detail in the the uh, Gold Diggers Underground and uh, Bonanza Club. Uh, you can find that at the GDU link that's uh, below or above, wherever it is. <laughs> so anyway, uh, for tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about Idaho and maybe some of the geology around Idaho. It's kind of unique. Uh, one of our one of our folks chimed in the other day and, and uh, brought up the point that uh, there is some special geologic features having to do with basically part of Washington actually Oregon, Idaho, and uh, let's see, Montana. And so we're going to be looking at, you know, how that affects what we see in the way of gold. But there's also some other, you know, statements that were made by him that, that will, you'll hear my opinion. So um, it, it's really one of these things where it's a dynamic field, geology, and it's also an imprecise science. Uh, we don't have any way to prove a lot of things that we know about geology, simply because we have no way to go back millions of years and perform experiments. We haven't figured out time warps yet. Go figure. So for now, we just rely on scientific knowledge of what behaviors we can recreate in the lab. Uh, we certainly haven't found the ability to simulate, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of miles down and 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 huge amounts of pressure and temperature, and then the release of that in a volcanic event or an earthquake or any any of that stuff. We just don't have the ability to do teratons or terajoules or tera anything. The reason why it's called tera is it's an earth-sized thing, 10 to the 12th. Go look it up. But anytime you see a tera joule or a tera event, it's usually involved with geology or possibly some weather science. You'll see tera joules occurring in hurricanes, things like that. But uh, I just want to talk about that because I like talking about science and, and jewels and fancy words. So let's get on to Idaho. What's going on here? So let's take a look. So in Idaho, we have a, a special, let's see, we have a special uh, environment where we see a huge amount of gold in the center part. Uh, all of this yellow stuff is, are gold prospects that have been found in, in the past. And, and geologically speaking, the past is recent history, as in the last couple of hundred years of registering these things. So there's significant amount of gold to be found here. I'm going to zoom in, but before I do, let's take a look at a couple of features that are pretty obvious here. One is there's this, this massive band which corresponds to the, the geologic characteristics of the region. In other words, the darker areas are mountains. These lighter areas are playas or, or fields or flat, you know, uh, grasslands or in this case, probably desert. And so what happens is when you have these things, there'll be two kind of characteristics. One is loads and other events that show up in these areas where there's been uplifting or mountain building. We call it orogenic activity. And the other is uh, lots of placer deposits along major tributaries or rivers that go through here. And, and you know, this one is going to be something I'll be getting to in a minute. But it's interesting the trajectory that that river takes and where it takes its gold. All of this is significant for you to kind of scope out the big picture and then zoom in to where you're looking. The reason why I always focus on looking at the big picture because it tells me a little bit about the geology that affects gold without having to dig deep into all the geology. You'll want to do that eventually and I'll bring up a piece of that tonight. It'd be kind of fascinating. So so this is what's going on. Let's zoom in to some of this right here. Uh, I'm going to try to zoom in here. You can see this is a uh, Nampa, Caldwell, and Boise. Okay, so this is all uh, pretty flat land, kind of prairie uh, area. A uh, lot of farming and so forth activity, but not so much up here. These are mountains; they're probably covered in snow, especially up in here. But notice the pattern that we see as we look up toward the mountains. First thing I want to point you point out is look how close there is gold prospects. Right next to the old Idaho Penitentiary. No, uh, <laughs> you never know what you discover when you're perusing these things. 
So let's look at this. This looks like about the closest prospect to Boise itself. It's called the Morningstar Mine. It was a past producer of gold as a first commodity, remember, per primary, and then silver as a secondary, okay, or, or commodity number two. There is no tertiary li listed here, no th number three. So this tells me that we've got a gold prospect here. We dig in a little bit. Uh, since we're near Boise, let's take a look and see what the records say. The records tell us that we have Lundgren, uh, pretty popular back in the 1800s. So this is 1890, 1898, Mining Districts of the Idaho Basin. Uh, mining districts is something you'll start hearing more about because they're, they're basically legislated by the 1872 mining law and they fell out of favor because of some politicking and unionizing and things like that. I don't remember the specifics, so I'm, I'm out of my element on this one. But basically, they fell out of favor, and they're now coming back into favor because the law actually calls out mining districts as having a an authority over things like the USGS, the Forest Service, BLM, you name it. And the reason is, we consider national resources to be a very important part of our national security. If you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. We build stuff. Uh, we we depend on it for our, our GDP, and, and uh, we also depend on it for our, our protection for military industrial material. So you can't just give it away, but we tend to, when we think of it as only one dimensional object, and that is it's free land to go look at. Now, the minute you stop producing these things or looking for them even, you can, can end up with decades of, of delay in development of stuff without using foreign material foreign as in the two major superpowers that are now emerging that have a potential to cause uh, difficulties in uh, international, you know, international trade. So it's one of those things where we really need to pay attention to. So mining districts were part of that and they're called out. You can kind of see that right down here, 1898 mining districts of the Idaho Basin and Boise Ridge, Idaho, uh, the 18th annual USGS survey. So uh, anyway, Lindgren was, you'll see his name as, as sort of the supervisor of this whole organization. That, that material during that period is some of the best geologic material you'll ever find. They were very thorough. The things they lacked in instrumentation, they made up for in the quality of their record keeping. So it's something worth noting that when you see his name on something, um, it might be worth finding a copy of it to go look it up. Uh, and so that's that for now. Um, so let's look. We have all of these mines in this area around Boise. We also have, as I pointed out earlier, a series of prospects to the south. This is heading more toward uh, Oregon. And, uh, oops, there's another Morning Star. Everybody likes to name their mines Morning Star. I don't know. Why don't we name it Night Star? That's when stars are supposed to show up. So Western Mining and Exploration Company, gold. Okay, past producer, underground. So this is a load mine. Okay. Uh, here we got some out here. Indian Hot Spring, occurrence, geothermal, silver, gold, and zeolites. Um, it doesn't mention anything about gold. I don't know why. It, oh, there it is, gold. So it has some gold traces in the geothermal deposits, which is fascinating. Probably came out as a study of the geothermal itself. Here we have Imperial Mercury. Mercury is the number one. Gold was coming out with it. And Diatomite, which is a, a uh, diatomaceous earth. Silica left over from diatoms in the ocean. So some at some time in the past, this was covered by ocean. That's one of the key elements about its history. So when we look at this area along in here, I, I promised I'd look at this band real quickly. Um, going up this stretch right through here, American Falls Reservoir, Big Island. So there's all kinds of interesting little uh, past producer unknown material. These ones say past producer unknown placer. Okay, so so my suspicion is all of them are placer along this line because this is a great place for stuff to be deposited downstream. Typically, is not going to be very heavy in nuggets. It's going to be finer material the further downstream you go because of the nature of the flows. Um, 
and therefore the places where you'll find the most interesting will be up toward the mountains to the east. Um, and so, uh, so it goes, and we look at this right along in here. So the Snake River kind of cuts on through there and, you know, basically makes its way across. Uh, Mountain Home Air Force Base, you know, all this kind of good stuff. So we're seeing this water, water, water all the way through here. Up through Nam near Nampa and then up in this region. So I'm driving this thing kind of nuts. So let's talk about something special about what we see here. Now... Let's zoom back out and look at Idaho in its relation to the nearby states. So this is Montana, this is Wyoming, Oregon, and Washington up here. Washington can come too. It's right there, hidden. So with that goes this region right down in here, not Tweety Mountain, right here, Yellowstone, okay? really on this corner between Idaho, Montana, and and Wyoming. Uh, and we typically think of it as being associated with Wyoming, but I'm going to show you something that tells you it has a much broader association with this area than you might think. So let's stay tuned. This is Prospector Jess. This is what was brought up by one of my viewers. One of you guys chimed in on comments uh, and, and basically stated, you know, that there's a history with this region having to do with Yellowstone and the caldera. A caldera is an old volcano, not necessarily extinct, but a volcano that erupted so violently that it blew a large portion of the material out of the volcano. And then what was remaining, because there was a, de a depressed uh, pressure below it, in other words, the, vo the magma chamber actually depleted, and the material just collapses in, a sinkhole forms. But it's massive, you know, tens to hundreds of miles in diameter. This one is big. This one is one of the biggest. It's also one of the most dangerous. Historically, it's blown and it's caused some serious trouble in a, on a global scale more than once. So what we're going to look at is a little bit of that global scale because uh, this will give you a little bit of idea of what influenced that caldera and that particularly not so much the caldera as it is the hot spot below it. When we look at magma below the surface, there's a hot spot association, and, and, and not a hot spot, but a, a plume uh, that rises up from deep as that magma gets hot and the density changes are different. So whatever the magma is, is less dense than the stuff below, which is typically more metallic. metallic. Uh, iron nickel core is the most dense. And so what happens is this material rises in the plume and carries with it other minerals that might be associated with gold that might precipitate out once they kind of get in the right environment. Uh, but the purpose of what I'm getting at is this plume. As it rises, what it's getting its heat from is a unique source. It can come from impacts from meteors. It can also come from radioactive decay of materials in the earth. And that is the most common source for most of the heat in the earth is decay of various uh, radioactive elements. But when you get these hot spots, they're oftentimes associated with something extraterrestrial, like a big meteorite impact, or they might be associated with a certain, a certain preference or a certain kind of behavior of the core. We really don't completely know. A lot, of, a lot of speculation, but we don't have any way of probing down in there. We can't get, you know, into the mantle hardly, you know, to make a make a determination. We've done Project Moho, that got down there. The Russians went the deepest. But even then, it was just a pinprick in the Earth's surface. So we don't really know, other than electromagnetic uh, detection methods that we use, what's going on inside the Earth. And right now, we're even puzzled as all get out because the Earth's magnetic poles are shifting at a very fast rate. And we don't know why. Usually, it has to do with eddy currents inside that metallic core. But we don't know what's causing it to shift. Go figure. So here's one for you. Watch this picture. So this is a movement of that caldera over time. Okay, so we're talking, uh, uh, I think it's millions of years ago. Okay, the caldera was basically under the corner of, of Oregon, Western Oregon, um, and, and moving up through Idaho, basically Oregon-Washington border here. Okay, it moved across the lower portion of Idaho. You remember that band of gold that we were looking at along this stream this river system 
Now, the thought is, and this was the, the, the statement made, was that this, this is the major influence for all the gold in this area, and I doubt that very much. I don't doubt that it influences all the gold in this region where the caldera has been, and perhaps even uh, has blown material because I know the eruptions that have happened associated with these various points where these hot spots were have, have time and time again moved teratons of material out of that magma carrying, among other things, metallic ores. The problem is, in many cases, when those metallic ores come out in those kinds of bodies, you know, they're typically flung as bombs and or lava flows, they're disseminated. They're not concentrated. And you have to have concentrations to have either load or the crushed out form of load, which is a placer deposit. Because that concentration is the only way to make it economically viable, short of a high concentration of micro gold, which is possible along these areas. So what we have right now is the ability to see in this picture that we have this arch that follows along from the southwest up into the north mid region and now is landed right under Yellowstone. That's where we are today is this yellow spot. This is 0.6 to 2.1. Okay, so what we're looking at here is is kind of what, what has happened historically with this hot spot that's moved underneath. It's actually kind of relative movement of one plate versus the other. So as as the as the Pacific plate dives, apparently this hot spot is staying associated with it and the crust is staying pretty much staying put. And what's happening is as as this magma dives along with the crustal elements of the of the basalt and all those mafic materials from the crust, plume that's coming up from this hot spot and it's moving relatively east. Hence it moves from this point, the 16.1, and kind of sweeps on up 10.7, 10.7, 6.4, 4.3. Uh, but the basic premise is, is where is what is the trajectory of this caldera? And that, that's what I wanted to show here for this. Uh, so let's go back to look at our gold and see how it relates. And you'll see the pattern I'm talking about. And then we swing in and look closer at this stuff down south. So remember that that caldera area was from here and then swung up, 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 and it is now up here. So it follows this trajectory more than anything. But this stuff is largely placer deposit following the, you know, this river basin, which is coming out of this region where we have the current manifestation of that caldera, which is this volcanic activity here. Now, it doesn't mean there weren't volcanoes all along here. I bet there were, but uh, they've since kind of eroded a lot. Uh, did they erode up into here? I that, that could have. So I'm not going to say no, but I'm going to say I'd have to really look closely to see what was going on there. I do know that an awful lot of the mountains up in here are coming via the buckling of the crustal materials and previous cracks and fissures that injected hydrothermal deposits, which could have been from the call there. It could have been that massive, uh, but I would I would have to see. Um, but the fact is that there are still volcanic, you know, volcanoes all along the Cascades. And there were fissure flows up in these regions that occurred. And I just have to kind of put those two and two together. Uh, he, he may have been pointing out the fissure flows and their timing. I have to go check that out. So that's it for Prospector Jess for Idaho. I just thought I'd dive in here and take a look at something special about it. Definitely no lack of gold in this uh, state, that's for sure. So, and no lack of really good prospects for things like dredging, I, you know, but there's been a lot of turmoil over dredging. Because one of the battles we always, you know, we've seen this in California, the battle always starts where we take uh, an eco group and we pit fishermen against everybody else. And then we pit hikers against everybody else. And then we pit everybody against everybody because you can't go into regions that are chained off if you hike because you'll have to hike from point A to point B uh, with a, an approved permit and I'm not going to release you one. So now what? So uh, we have a problem, but uh, you know, again, it's more uh, what are we looking at here that has the prospect or the possibility of having gold and nothing beats history. So I use the government gold maps, GG, GGM uh, is the instructional, you know, report that I give on how to use this thing. And then I go in and dive in to find these little fun facts and figures and look up things about different peaks and find the connection between uh, between uh, what's going on here and, and uh, you know, places like uh, Yellowstone National Park. 
So uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, again, we've got that uh, check out the GDU offer below at sourdoughminer.com slash GDU slash. And that's it for tonight. Good prospecting. Catch you later.